What's going on, PewTubia? My name is Chris, this is Ballistically Speaking, and I've got my hands on a Lockhart Raven 556, which a lot of people have been asking us to review, asking our opinions on them. Up until this point, I've never fired one. Let's take a look at it, and we're gonna analyze it from top to bottom. This is a custom build, like a lot of the Ravens that people are getting are. So there's a lot of things I'm gonna eliminate here that are going to depend entirely on your build. For example, the one I'm looking at has an IVI uh, barrel on it. Uh, if you put a non-IVI barrel on it, your mileage is gonna vary with the accuracy. So I'm not gonna worry about all of that sort of stuff. I'm gonna take a look at the stuff that is specifically Lockhart. I'm gonna take a look at the stuff that is specifically for the Raven and let's see how it does. All right, guys, this is the new Lockhart Raven 556. So this is a, a, a custom built, uh, you know, shout out to uh, he who shall remain nameless who has loaned this rifle to me uh, for this review. Uh, I really appreciate it. It was uh, great to be able to get my hands on one of these things. So this is uh, built mostly with uh, spare AR parts um, that were left over. Uh, this has a IVI uh, fluted barrel on it. You know, it's got a nice muzzle brake on it, a nice loophole scope. Um, I believe this is a, what the heck are these called? A rab, eh, starts with an R, not Rampage. No, this is a, this is the Raven brand name. Yeah, this is a brand name Raven charging handle. So this is charging handle is from Lockhart. Okay. What is proprietary with this rifle is obviously the lower receiver, which is in two pieces. You can see these two pins here and then your pivot pin uh, at the front. Um, and the mag whole magazine well here is actually its own part. It's a two piece lower and it bolts to the rest of the lower right here. Um, so you've got two pieces and they do that because of the caliber swapping ability with it. Originally, this was a nine millimeter uh, rifle. Now it's a 5.56 rifle. So all they change is the magazine. Well, you don't have to change the rest of the receiver and you won't be able to see it. But right here is where the, the serial number is. So the serial number is on the back part of the receiver. Um, it does use standard buffer tubes uh, and uh, buffer spring. The, whole, the entire buffer system is, is standard uh, mil-spec uh, stuff. The bolt is an AR bolt, but the carrier is proprietary. It looks very much like a standard AR-15 bolt carrier, but it is not. It is standard, or sorry, it's proprietary to the Lockhart Raven. So that is worth noting right there. If you're looking for something that runs and functions the most like an AR, um, this is it. Uh, this is super light. This feels like I'm using an AR, um, but obviously I'm not. It's the closest I've gotten to feeling like I'm shooting an actual AR-15 um, since, uh, well, about May of, well, that's not true. I've gone to the States a few times, but the first time in Canada since about May of 2020. Um, it is direct impingement, so it's not a piston-based system. So again, um, that's very standard to AR. What I will say is I have been having some pretty regular issues with this. I don't know if it's because of the ammunition. I've only used one type of ammunition in this so far, and it is UMC Remington. And I have had some issues um, with uh, um, uh, the round catching on the feed ramp um, and smushing the round, but I've had that happen with a couple of other platforms with the UMC ammunition, so I'm not ready to blame the Lockhart for that. Hey everyone, it's future Chris here. Uh, I wanted to uh, do a quick addendum to this uh, Lockhart Raven review. Uh, something that I didn't realize when I was shooting that we found out after I returned the rifle to its owner actually, um, a significant number of the failures uh, that we were experiencing were due to the fact that the bolt carrier had cracked in half and uh, I'll put a picture up uh, uh, that I have of the of the bolt carrier you can clearly see that there's a there's a crack um, in the, the 
in the bolt carrier, the gun continued to function even though that had cracked. But, well, it's, it's continued to partially function. But uh, I had issues with cycling and that sort of thing. Uh, it kind of, you know, to my mind, it kind of invalidates a little bit the magazine testing I was doing. I had a camera failure when I was doing the magazine testing anyway. Um, for the most part, I, I think that the all of the magazines, I'm going to say that they, they ran well, with the exception of the off-caliber magazines. I was using 450 eight SOCOM magazine, I was using a 6.5 Grendel magazine. Neither of those cycled very well. Um, maybe they would cycle better if the bolt carrier wasn't broken, but I mean, they're off caliber magazines anyways. They were, I was just throwing them in for fun. But I think all of the other magazines that I used, uh, I, we used Gen 2, Gen 3 P mags. Uh, we used uh, um, uh, aluminum GI mags. We used uh, a couple of different types of metal GI mags. We used uh, a Sterling Arms uh, R18 magazine, and we used both Generation 1 and Generation 2 Cross Industries magazines. And uh, I now realize all of the failures that we had, of which there weren't that many, but we had a couple, uh, and I think all of the failures we had were due to the fact that the bolt carrier was uh, not, not working right. Um, so I found out that that was a common or is a common thing with these Lockhart Ravens. Um, for whatever reason, something was not correct in their bolt carriers. I don't know if they were machined too thin. Uh, I don't know if the wrong metal was used. I don't know if the uh, uh, process of, of forging the carriers was was not done right. Maybe hardening wasn't, I don't know uh, what it is. I've seen speculation. It's internet speculation. Uh, they are, Lockhart has told the owner of this rifle, um, so I am doing this about a month and a half after the initial review of this rifle. I've been sitting on, on getting this out to you guys. Uh, I last spoke to the owner of the rifle about three and a half weeks after I tested it. He still did not have a Gen 2 bolt carrier yet. I've been looking online. I've been seeing a lot of complaining uh, from people saying that uh, they're not getting an ETA, uh, they're just being asked to hang on, and that the Gen 2 bolt carriers will fix the problem and they'll be sent out. I can't confirm that, I can't deny it. To my knowledge, they, they, they still aren't out there. Um, when they do get out there, if I have the opportunity, I will see if I can get my hands on this Raven again. I don't know if I'll be able to, but I'll see if I can. And uh, we'll, we'll do a, a follow-up review on it. But, um, you know, uh, this is a, a common issue that we see um, with how quickly these uh, things are, are trying to be brought out to market. And it's, it's tough for these manufacturers. Uh, the environment that they're working in is terrible. And, uh, but the end result is that things are, are being rushed out and, and it seems like this was as well. I know the BCL Siberian had uh, firing pin issues when it uh, first was released. It looks like the Ravens are going to be the bolt carriers. You know, Kodiak had issues with their piston. Um, you know, Spectre Limited had issues with the uh, rear takedown and with their, uh, uh, the, the pin on their rear take, on the rear of their upper receiver, I should say. Um, it just seems like it's a, it's, it's a standard thing. Um, they're coming out fast and uh, maybe a little faster than they should, but that is, uh, that's the follow-up. Let's take you back to the actual video. Um, I will say that the lower receiver has quite a few sharp edges. And just from shooting it, like first of all, right here, you can see it's already wearing, but just gripping the, the rifle, my finger on the inside here keeps catching on this sharp little edge here. And just a little that I've been shooting this rifle today, I've probably put maybe 120 rounds through it today. And already I'm getting uh, nice wear marks and gouge marks on the inside of my finger. You could fix that by wearing gloves, but I don't think you should have to wear gloves just to not gouge up your fingers on a rifle. So that's very sharp. Oddly enough, the front of the magwell is not sharp at all. It's rounded and finished quite nicely. It's just back here. And I don't even know why they did this. Um, obviously it's a one piece um, uh, um, what's this called? A trigger guard. Thank you. 
Um, it's a one piece trigger guard, but I don't know why they have this flared piece here. It doesn't make any sense to me. I would just like take the time and shave that down. In fact, if I had this rifle, especially if I was going to be repainting it, I would probably just shave it with a Dremel tool to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, it uses proprietary um, captive pins. Um, which is fine. I think that's okay. Um, obviously, you have the two additional pins for how the fr uh, front of the lower mates with the rear of the lower. The bolt release on this rifle is a standard bolt, uh, mil spec bolt release. However, the person who owns this had to shave the top of it because it caught on this. Um, well, they have a charging handle slot in here because you can have rear charging for this rifle but you can also screw in a, a charging handle so that you have a reciprocating bolt handle i don't know why they did that to be perfectly honest if you're going to create this system this is what people want with this rear charging handle anyway uh, apparently i did that too many times this is what people want anyway so why bother with this i, I don't understand what this is about uh, it also it keeps the receiver open which is one of the biggest complaints that people have always had about the 180 platforms in canada uh, and now you've kind of like you don't have the best of either um, so I don't understand this at all and it prevents you from using a standard paddle release a mil spec paddle release without shaving it down And I can see there's wear marks uh, on where he's painted it already where it is wearing just hitting that paddle But it is standard. He only has one side uh, standard um, Safety selector switch. It's not ambi. That's fine. Um, I, it's not that hard to get an AR ambi switch and, and put it in so if that's what you want then do it uh what else what am i missing here obviously the the grips the hand guard i believe this is not a lockhart this is his um so the hand guards are compatible with standard mil spec uh, hand guards uh the gas block is your standard gas block that uh, he's had on this barrel for uh, quite some time i would probably put an adjustable gas block on it um, i have had some issues where uh, the last round bolt hold open is not working in fact the last round has not held open more often than it has held open again i've only put the one type of ammunition through it but that's what i've experienced so far having an adjustable gas block would really allow me to troubleshoot that a little bit better um, this is just regular old furniture i'm not even going to worry about this the big the most important differences with this rifle are in this area here. It's your two-piece lower receiver, it's a proprietary upper, it's your proprietary charging handle, and your proprietary bolt carrier, um, and your proprietary pins. Okay, let's start with the magazines. Everybody always wants to know, what magazines does it work with? What magazines is it compatible with? Which magazines is it inconsistent with? As you can see, I've got a lineup of magazines and we're gonna take a look at all of them. First of all, we've got a Cross Industries magazine, uh, Generation 2. We've got a standard, like uh, kind of GI issue uh, aluminum magazine. We have a Generation 3 P mag with the Sterling Arms logo on it. We have a Generation 2 P mag. We have a Hera magazine. We have a Sterling Arms, uh, this is uh, what the new Sterling Arms rifles are shipping with. It is their, I think it's unbranded, yeah, I don't even know what the brand uh, is of this, but this is a steel magazine, uh, and this is a Generation 1 cross, P, uh, cross magazine, and this in this together, these are two call them off caliber magazines that we're going to test. Uh, this is a 6.5 Grendel. But obviously we're putting our uh, 223 ammunition in it. And this is 458 SOCOM that we're putting our 223 ammunition in it. Every single one of these magazines is loaded with UMC Remington bulk pack ammunition. Generally, this is reliable ammunition for me, although I've got to be honest with you, the last thousand rounds that I bought of this, which was uh, post pandemic ammunition has not been as reliable. So we're going to see if we have any failures. We're going to try to determine if it's the fault of the ammunition or if it's the fault of the gun or the magazine or whatever it is. Hey, let's get started. Okay, we're going to do this in no particular order, just whatever magazine I happen to grab first. And what I am grabbing first is the Generation 2 Cross Industries magazine. So first thing of note, it inserts pretty well. Um, the magazine well is at a nice angle. And it goes in there good. It's not over inserting at all. And it's catching quite nicely. 
magazine release. Just wasted around, but that's okay. Magazine release looks okay. We should have nine rounds here. Now this is something I have been noticing as I've been using this rifle. On this particular one, the magazine hold open almost never functions. Sometimes it does, the majority of the time it doesn't. More on that later. As for how the magazine worked, I think it worked just fine. Nine rounds, nine fires. Let's go. Hey, just cause it's here, let's try the generation one magazine. Inserts just the same. No issues whatsoever. Feels pretty much the same as the uh, Gen 1 magazine did. Although, let's see if we have to worry about, no, nothing to, with over insertion. Closes just fine. We should have 10 rounds. Okay, we've had a failure to feed properly. Let's see what it is. You guys may or may not believe this. I was just doing a magazine test with the new Lockhart Raven 556. And after two minutes, my camera stopped recording because it's too hot out here. And it shut my camera down. Did the whole rest of the test. Just don't have enough ammunition with me to repeat it. Cool. So the question becomes, is this worth it? Do you want to get this over um, any of the 180 rifles in Canada? If you've got a full 15 build that you want to repurpose, yeah, I mean, get the Raven. If you want something that feels as close to what you're used to prior to May of 2020 as possible, then yeah, you want the Raven. This is the closest to a 15 that we have gotten in Canada since May of 2020. So if that's what you're looking for, then this is the one that you want. Um, I will say that in, because of the two piece here, uh, the bolt release has been moved forward and there's no way on God's green earth you're getting that without rolling your fingers forward. You have to kind of let go of the uh, grip a little bit and roll your finger even further forward to be able to press that magazine release. It is a little bit of a pain in the ass. So it's not exactly AR-15 um, nostalgia because of with the two piece, that is different and you need to know that and you need to be okay with that. But other than that, this is as close as you're gonna get to that 15 feel, I think, um, right now. Is it worth it over the 180s? This hasn't functioned any better for me than uh, a lot of the 180s have. I've had issues with some of the 180s. Um, the, you know, some piston issues in some of the models are very well known. Um, early on uh, with uh, some of the other models, I had uh, issues with extraction. Um, all of those issues got fixed in all of the 180 platforms that I've ever uh, had. If I owned this, I'm quite certain that after a little bit, I'd be able to work around or ha hammer out all of the small issues that I've been seeing so far with it as well. Um, obviously it's cut my finger a little bit uh, where the charging handle is. Cause again, there's another sharp piece right here at the edge of the Picatinny rail. My finger just keeps rubbing on it when I'm charging it quickly. So it, this isn't perfect, just like None of the Canadian platforms have been absolutely perfect out of the box. Is it better? No, it's different. Which one should you get? That's up to you. You have to decide for yourself. If you want as close to the 15 experience as possible, this is the one. If you don't really care about that, there are other platforms um, that work just as well as this one um, that may or may not be less expensive, that may or may not require you to build it yourself. Um, it's entirely up to you. The other thing that I will say that concerns me about this is an FRT, as this is as I understand it. Now, if I'm wrong about this, please correct me in the comments, but this is my understanding as of the time that I'm shooting this video and I'm not a lawyer and I don't know anything about anything. And so take this for what it's worth, but it's my understanding that an FRT was obtained for this rifle in nine millimeter. Now I do not recall off the top of my head if the nine millimeter 
is direct impingement or if it's direct blowback. I actually am not certain about that. Something tells me that it is direct blowback. So if that is the case, then when we swap, we, we're basically getting a Lockhart Raven nine millimeter lower receiver. Then we're getting an upper receiver that is essentially an upper receiver in Magwell that is essentially a conversion kit to convert it to 556. Five, and then we're building it out from there. But in the process of doing that, we're changing the function of the rifle, um, if I'm correct about that, and changing it from direct blowback to uh, uh, direct impingement, it makes me worry about arbitrary decisions in the future of what may happen with this rifle. If you want something to, if you want Mr. Right Now, and you want that AR-15 feel, I, I, this is undoubtedly the only option that you've got. If you're thinking a little bit more long term, if you're, you know, if you're kind of the kind of guy that is like, if I want, if my rifle's going to go bye bye, I want it to be because all semi-auto uh, rifles are bye bye, not because somebody has decided that this is already a little bit too much like something that they've already gotten rid of. Um, that would be a concern for me. You're going to have to make your own decision. And if you want to, if you're comfortable with that possibility, this seems like a, a great option for you. And, and I think you should get it. And I've really enjoyed shooting this rifle and uh, I'm going to continue shooting it a little bit more before I give it back. So this is kind of my thoughts on this uh, Lockhart Raven. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the video. Thanks for joining me and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.